the St. Johns River, site of the $175,000 Bass Angler Sportsman Society's Florida Invitational. And for the 289 anglers ready to compete along the 150 miles of shoreline of the shallow tidal river, anticipation is high. But that expectation is clouded by the fact that during the practice period, a strong, blustery cold front has turned off these Florida bass. Winds in excess of 60 miles per hour and sub-freezing cold temperatures have chilled the St. John's waters some 12 to 15 degrees, driving the bass from the shorelines into deeper water. It's spring on the St. John's River, and the bass were ready to start their spawn till this cold front moved in. Any way you figure it, water temperature is the key to catching pre-spawn and spawning bass. When the water temperature is right, look out. But for now, it's not right. Although there are some spawning beds in areas like this canal, the bass are gone, backed off from the beds. The St. John's is a tidal river, and unlike most rivers in the U.S., runs from south to north. And the fishing, particularly in the river, is tidal influenced. The average depth of the St. John's is about 12 feet. But there are drop-offs and wheat beds out in the main river, like Mississippi pro Mike Bingham is fishing here. Alabama's Mike Kelly, a relative newcomer on the BASS tournament trail, is faring well this first morning, if he can get this heavyweight bass into the boat. Meanwhile, Mike Bingham boats another bass from his small mid-river drop-off. Honey holes like this, stacked with bass, have won tournaments before. Mike may have hit the mother load. Mike Kelly is fishing a quarter-ounce spinnerbait in laydowns along a creek bank. What's he doing to catch bass in the wake of this cold front? What I've really been doing most of the morning up until about an hour ago was fishing parallel in some hydrilla grass, catching some smaller fish, but we decided we'd move out and move down the bank while the tide was going out and uh, created a current and an eddy behind a lot of this structure, so we've been trying to fish behind these tops and things and catch the shady, shady part on the farthest tips. And uh, just so happens that, uh, you know, we hit the right ones at the right time. The contestants are allowed to weigh in seven bass daily, each measuring at least 12 inches. For many, that will be a tough chore. But for Mike Kelly, a first-year rookie pro, this will be a day to remember. 17 pounds, 13 ounces. Let's give a nice hand. A remarkable, remarkable catch. Mike, that is a reach in here. These are all good fish. Folks, he's on a pattern that's paying off with, with bigger average fish. You got several fish in there that go averaging two and a half pounds. These are two, two of the larger ones. And this one in his left hand is a fish that will, of course, boost it right up into glory. Louisiana's Gene Pizzolatto also caught bass this first day. His 17-pound catch moves him into second place. And what about Mississippi's Mike Bingham? All right, here we go. Beautiful bunch of fish, folks. Watch the scale. 16 pounds, two ounces. Let's give a nice hand. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back from Crystal Cove on the banks of the St. John $5,000 Bassmasters Florida Invitational. The weather's good and forecast to stay that way. Clear, little or no wind, and warmer. Hopefully the bass will move back shallow. Mike Bingham returns first thing to his mid-river honey hole. That felt funny when I hooked him. I felt it bump once and then it went slack and bumped again. It, it hooked him right on the side.
fish was about 12 feet deep. Not too far away in Murphy's Creek, the leader, Mike Kelly, tries to get the bass in a biting mood. But the lack of current in the creek seems to have the bass switched off. Gene Pizzolatto, fishing in Little Lake George, is also having a tough time this second morning. The bass simply are not biting for the leaders. Up and down the river and into Crescent Lake, where Mike Miller is fishing, the catching is slow. This Missouri Bassmaster was in fifth place. If things don't improve rapidly, he'll fall off the pace. At the start of today's competition, two familiar names weren't on the leaderboard or even close to the top 20, Roland Martin and Guido Hibben. But that's fixing to change after this weigh-in. Here comes Roland. Roland has a limit. He had six pounds yesterday. Let me hit that one lick. Folks, watch it. Largest of the tournament, 23 pounds, 12 ounces. Let's give him a good hand. That ought to put you right up there in the bump. That puts Roland in the lead, people. Let's give him another hand. Come on. And now Guido Hibden, 1990 Bass Angler of the Year, heads to the scales. He's always a threat, particularly in a shallow water sight fishing situation. Hibben man, Guido Hibden of Missouri, had five pounds, 11 ounces yesterday. Won the Bassmaster Classic two years ago with a remarkable performance. Today, seven bass. I want you to watch the scale, folks. This is a great angler. 22 pounds, 12 ounces. Let's give him a good hand for Guido Hibden. The last day of the St. John's Florida Invitational, and the leaderboard has changed. Roland Martin moves atop the standings, followed closely by Gene Pizzolatto and Guido Hibden. The takeoff scheduled for 6.50 a.m. is delayed. Dense fog shrouds the river, and BASS tournament director Dewey Kendrick holds the anglers. Uh, we're holding them up right now. I think we've held them up so far for about 30 minutes right now. And we're going to continue to hold all the boats until the fog clears. I just sent a boat out a few minutes ago to the middle of the river to see if it was clear on, out on the other side. And they said it was thicker out there than it is here. So because of safety reasons, uh, we're not going to let the boats go this morning. We're going to hold them up uh, until this fog clears, whether it's another 30 minutes or another three hours. Finally, two and a half hours later, the final round gets underway. This delay will cut into the fisherman's day, particularly for Roland and Guido, who are fishing in Lake George, about an hour's running from the launch area. Both these Bassmasters are doing essentially the same thing, fishing bass which are moving in for the spawn. Some are already on beds, others are cruising. It's strictly visual fishing, a technique both Roland and Guido excel at. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back with some great bass catching action and a little unique boat remodeling. Tone Go Cooper's suit of tarpon with a fly rod. He's using that flats fishing knowledge to get to his Lake George fishing area in the final hours of the Bassmaster Florida Invitational. Not far away, Guido Hibden has settled into his fishing spot at Salt Springs Run, and it's paying off. Something else Florida flats anglers do is fish from a raised platform. But it's not standard on a bass boat. But if you're innovative like Roland Martin, you can come up with most anything, even this. Meanwhile, Guido scores again.
And Roland Martin, fresh from his 17th career BASS win at Lake Okeechobee, is also finding bass in the grass. I don't know if he's a keeper or not. I don't think, I don't know. I don't know, we'll do a quick check. Yeah, keeper. <laughs> quick check. Not all fishing is catching. Sometimes even nature's best misses. And it's tough luck for the pros, too. Sometimes, for these professional anglers, there's added frustration, like here. That big one he got. About a five. Five or six. Oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But the 11th hour battle for the $34,000 Florida Invitational Top Catch goes on. The battle continues. Long now. I just I'm up in there. <laughs> That's pretty hit on the grab, but here we go. Okay. Just kept messing with them. Not very big, but it's uh, you know what we ought to do. As Guido Hibden moves quietly in his small area, locating and casting to the bass, his partner for the day, Jim Janelle of Virginia, shows true sportsmanship. Out of contention, Janelle opts for the majority of the day to help Guido, anchoring the boat, letting Hibden have his day. It works both ways. Yesterday, when Guido had his limit, he quit fishing at 1 p.m. and turned the boat over to his partner. That's sportsmanship. And when it's all added up later today, this just might be a $34,000 bass. We'll see. Well, this is it. Show and tell time. The final weigh-in. Guido Hibden of Missouri. He has seven bass. This will put him in the lead if he's got so much as a couple of pounds. He's, he knows what winning's about, and he's got a limit of bass, and I have not heard of any of the top men with a limit. And the weight, this will put him in the lead in a big way, folks. He'll probably win the tournament. 14 pounds, nine ounces for Guido Hibden. All right, if we could, allow, I want to ask you this. Guido, you're early. This is early in the first flight. Shall we weigh this bass? Fish look like it go about three and a half, four pounds. And the weight, just to be sure, this is the largest so far. The largest for him, five pounds, six ounces. Let's have a nice hand, Guido Hibden. That fish might be the difference in victory. 
Well, I, you know, I, like I said yesterday, I had a terrible first day. I, I don't know. You know, I only had 5'11 the first day. A lot of folks are curious about the lure you used. Give us an area that you caught these bass. Well, I've, I've got a little place down there just at the uh, mouth of Lake George. It's kind of a little spring is what it amounts to. All the fish I was catching, I was catching them on a G4 is what I was, and a Guido bug. You know, if I'd miss one on a G4, I'd throw a Guido bug in there, and usually they'd hit it. I didn't land all of them, but Shaw Grigsby has got a new hook, and trust me, it's it's a dynamite bait for a tube bait, or I mean a hook for a tube bait, that's for sure. All right. We want to wish you well. You got a long way to sweat it out. You got some dynamite fish from behind you. We wish you well, Guido Hibden. Thank you. It's good being here. Now, right, Roland here Martin. Go. Next man. Does he have enough? Roland has uh, seven keepers. Six. Seven. I have seven. You got this one right here. You got this behind you here. That's called a keeper. Okay. That's good. An old joke. All right, six and one. Total weight for Roland. Nine pounds, 14 ounces, and that will not take the lead. He loses the lead to Guido Hibden at least. And the winner of the St. John's Florida Invitational is Guido Hibden. His 43-pound catch also catapults him into first place in the 1991 Angler of the Year race. It's shaping up to be another good year for Guido Hibden on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Right now, it's time for the Pro's Pointer, the how-to section of the Bassmasters. Brought to you by Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. Yeah, the new hook that I've been using is uh, the high-performance hook that Shaw and Mr. Clark come out with. And the reason I use it is because it's, it, it's got a little clip on it, and you can Texas rig it to fish in this grass like I was fishing. It's kind of got the shape of a bait hook. The rig it, you just barely go in the end of the tube, and you turn it around and pull it up, and then clip your hook. And you have to put a tiny bit of a bend in the tube to get your hook to go straight through it, like so, because you always want your tube straight. And then slide your peg sinker right down against the tube, and that's what you end up with. And you can fish about any type grass. These big fish, you know, if they wouldn't bite one particular color, I caught a lot of them on the camouflage color, this one here. But if they wouldn't bite this one very much, then I would go to the gold. I threw the gold a lot, and then the crawfish color. You know, there's any number of that. And the other thing that I done, I used a lot of the new real claw. And it definitely made a big difference on these cruising fish, especially. Maybe not necessarily on the bedding fish, but the cruising fish. It definitely made a big difference. It's made by the Riverside Lure Company, and it's called Real Claw. Follow these tips, and I think y'all will catch more fish, too.